Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about these unusual creatures you see on the screen. This is actually a type of an animal known as Heneguia salminicola and it turns out that we just discovered that this is the only animal known to us that doesn't breathe, it does not need any oxygen. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Okay, so technically on our planet, there are organisms that don't really require any oxygen. But normally these are really primitive bacteria, such as for example, I guess the most famous bacteria is this right here. This is the so-called botulinum bacteria that's responsible for producing, well essentially, Botox. Which today is really famous for cosmetic surgery, but is also the most potent poison ever. Either way, the so-called anaerobic bacteria or anaerobic organisms, the organisms that don't require oxygen, are normally really really ancient and very primitive. None of these ancient creatures would qualify as animals, basically what we would call any of these beautiful representatives of Kingdom Animalia. And we've always believed that pretty much all of the animals always required oxygen for breathing through these so-called process known as cellular respiration that often requires this organelle that's found inside the cells known as mitochondria. Here's an actual image of these mitochondria and pretty much every single cell with some minor exceptions has these. And what these mitochondria usually do is use a relatively complex chain of chemical reactions that does include oxygen which then produces what's known as ATP. And in a nutshell, without going into too much detail, ATP is essentially a universal fuel for every single cell in our body. Pretty much every time you breathe in and introduce oxygen into your system, this is then used to produce ATP, which is then used by other cells to do all kinds of different work. Because this is how energy is made in our bodies and basically bodies of all of the animals around our planet. With this one exception that we just found only a few days ago from when I'm making this video. This strange animal right here that sort of looks like, I guess, human sperm, but in reality is actually a type of a jellyfish. This animal is part of a kingdom known as Cnidaria, which is basically jellyfishes and of course things that create corals. And also at the same time, this is one of the most important marine animal groups that only lives in the ocean and participates in all kinds of activity in the oceans. And for the most part, this kingdom divides into two major types the swimming type and the sedentary type that kind of stays and does nothing. In total there are over 11,000 different species of Cnidaria and for the most part all of them have one thing in common. They all possess these cells known as cnidocytes, which you might be familiar with if you had ever been stunned by a jellyfish. The stain itself is from these cnidocyte cells. And so all of them have these cells to some extent and some of them have actually evolved to use these cells differently. But there's also about a thousand or actually eleven hundred of these animals that over time became what's known as a parasite. They essentially live off other animals' products. And in most cases, these animals are some sort of a fish. And this strange animal known as Heneguia salminicola learned to live off the muscles of typical salmon. Actually, a lot of fishermen, when they catch salmon, they find these unusual bubbles inside that sometimes they refer to as Salmonella tapioca. Basically, these bubbles are created by these parasites, and they live inside the fish most of their adult life, while as babies they usually live inside different marine worms. And as these worms get eaten by salmon, they then get reintroduced into the fish itself. And so the scientists studying this unusual organism decided to try to investigate its DNA, and accidentally discovered that it doesn't possess any mitochondrial DNA. In other words, it's not able to produce these powerhouses of the cell. It's not able to breathe oxygen. Now, at first they thought it was a mistake, and so they decided to test another similar organism, which seemed to have been just fine. It seemed to have mitochondria, but surprisingly, Hanaguya had nothing. And the other interesting thing about these organisms is that they're relatively simple in terms of what they have and what they can do. For example, they also lost all of their nerves, their tissues, and even muscles. And these tiny looking objects that look like eyes, those are the nidocytes, the staining cells of typical uh, jellyfish. But instead of staining and instead of actually catching the prey, instead they seem to be only used for grabbing onto the actual muscles of the fish and then feeding off it. So in other words, everything that these organisms used to have has now devolved completely. They became a lot simpler than they used to be. So in some sense this is really interesting. Instead of becoming more complex over time, 
the organism here became much simpler and lost a lot of its previous functions. And it's probably because over time the evolution led this organism to become really lazy. It sort of started relying on its host so much that it lost the ability to do anything else. In the past it was probably very similar to other jellyfish, it was probably able to sting, it was probably able to even detect things, possibly even had muscles, now it doesn't really have much. Its whole life cycle is essentially eating the muscles of salmon, reproducing, having the babies then swallowed by a worm, which then gets swallowed by fish to restart the same cycle. But how is it even possible for this organism to survive without breathing, without essentially using oxygen? Well, that's a huge mystery. Right now, the scientists think that maybe it's actually getting everything from the muscles of the fish. And so somehow it's able to get all of its needed nutrients from inside the fish's muscles. And that's really, really strange and we've never seen this before. So essentially, this is now one of the biggest biological mysteries we've discovered on planet Earth. Because either this organism has found a way to extract ATP from the fish itself, or it's somehow adapted to survive without this at all. Maybe it uses some other molecule for energy. And maybe, unlike other animals, it has devolved to be very similar to more ancient organisms from billions of years ago that used to be everywhere around the planet. Eventually, the oxygen-breathing animals took over, but until a few billion years ago, pretty much nothing here was breathing oxygen. But since this is a really recent discovery, we really know nothing else about this strange creature. We know that it doesn't breathe, we know it lives inside the fish, and I guess that's pretty much it. And one of the main reasons why the scientists behind the study believe that this organism devolved to not breathe is actually because in the DNA they discovered something that resembled mitochondria, or at least that used to be mitochondria, but was no longer functional. So in other words, Hanaguya definitely seems to have lost the ability to breathe over time. We don't know when, but at some point it just decided to stop breathing altogether and instead just suck everything out of salmon. And it's very likely that one of the main reasons why this actually happened is because these uh, animals really thrive on being able to reproduce as quickly as possible. Basically here it's all about the numbers. So in order to reproduce as quickly as possible, they thought that, well, listen, if you don't breathe, you can do it even quicker. Which for the time being, at least, seems to work for these creatures for as long as salmon is around. And since these strange Cnidarian creatures are essentially some of the oldest animals on Earth, some of them are actually 700 million years old in terms of evolution, in the future we might discover even more mysteries about these creatures and discover something else we didn't expect. But for now, it looks like this is the strangest discovery, in biology at least, of 2020, and it's very likely we're going to be hearing about Heneguia Salmonicola once again, once we discover what's going on here. But until then, and until we learn more, that's really it. I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video in the future. For now, we just don't really know enough. You can read more about this in the description below. And also, you can subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about sciences and space, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And possibly consider supporting this channel on Patreon, or possibly by buying the beautiful, and that's beautiful in my opinion, t-shirt, hoodie, or a pillow. It's the one I'm wearing right now, actually. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.